Shalom, family. This is Elder Jenkins with the King James Bible University. And I want to speak to you on a topic. I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. And we know the most high God of Israel, he only has one doctrine in the Bible. And we do know in this world, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of doctrines that people follow. But the Most High is speaking to us today and he's telling us, I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. So we're gonna allow the precepts to take us on this journey. I'm not gonna be before you very long and this teaching is straight to the point. And I uh, pray that someone would be edified and gain some wisdom and knowledge and some strength to just trust and have faith in the Most High and follow His voice and obey His voice. So let's go forward with the teaching. Deuteronomy 32 and 1. Give ear, O ye heavens. And I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. So when he say, my doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb and as the showers upon the grass, he's saying his knowledge. His knowledge is going to always be dropping down as rain. So when we see that comparison of the water, he's talking about his knowledge. It's just the basics. Amos 3, 1 and 2. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So this knowledge that he's talking about is going to drop down as the rain upon the grass. He's sitting there telling you, Israel, you only have he known. So this law and this knowledge that he's gonna drop down this doctrine, all these hidden treasures. He's telling you, family, you only have he known out of all of the families of the earth. So he's talking to you. Isaiah 45 and 18. For thus said the Lord that created the heavens, Yahweh himself that formed the earth and made it. He have established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save. So he's sitting there telling you, family, you only have I known out of all the families of the earth. He said, I'm going to drop my doctrine, drop my knowledge upon you, as the rain upon the grass, as the rain upon that 
10 of herb. He said, assemble yourselves and come, draw near together. In other words, seek out my precepts diligently. He said, thou has commanded us to do it. Psalms 119 and 4. And the reason why he told us to do it, because in Psalms 119 and 104, he said, through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. So he said, assemble yourselves and come. Draw together, ye that are escape of the nations. In other words, all of these different doctrines out there, all of these different beliefs out there, escape. If you escape from them, he said, they have no knowledge. They set up the wood of their graven image and pray unto a God, an idol God, a false God that cannot save. Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who have, who have declared this from ancient time? Who have told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior. There is none besides me. Look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth for I am God and there is none else so he's sitting there telling us all of these different doctrines and all of these different gods across the whole globe that people serve and worship he said he set up graven images and pray to God that cannot save. But he's telling you, family, he said, look unto me and be ye saved in them last days. When I send my spirit Christ to come back and, and uh, put in work on this world, when I send him back to bring forth judgment upon this world, he said, look unto me and be ye, spayed, uh, be ye saved. In other words, be ye spared from the destruction that I'm going to uh, send forth with my judgment. When I send my angels to come put in work down here, look unto me and be ye saved in that day. All the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. See, you don't have to be ashamed. Only thing we need to do is come to him while you have a chance, family. While you able. Put your time in studying his word and get to know him and start making the adjustments in your life. Turning and doing the words that's meant for repentance. Ecclesiasticus 19 and 19. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree mortality. See, family, he's telling you right here, it's called the doctrine of life. See, all these different thousands and thousands and thousands of doctrines out there, they don't bring you life. It's just a belief system. But he's sitting there telling us the knowledge of the commandments of the Lord, doctrine of life. If you want to have eternal life, he say, and they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. And that's the fruit of the spirit. And I didn't put that in here, but I'm going to go ahead and run this precept right quick because it's so befitting. Let's say Galatians chapter 5. 
and we'll start at the uh, 22nd verse. It says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. So when he say, and they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. So these are the fruits of the spirit that he's talking about, family. Verse 18, the fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of him and wisdom obtained his love. Ecclesiastes 16 and 24, my son, hearken unto me and learn knowledge and mark my words with thy heart. I will show forth doctrine and wait and declare his knowledge exactly. So this is what he's saying. He's going to show it forth and wait. So he already told us, he who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. So are you hungry for this knowledge today? Are you hungry? Do you have an appetite for the knowledge of the most high? Are you willing to put in the time to seek out his precepts diligently? Line upon line, hear little and dear little, precept upon precept. Are you willing to humble yourself and follow his instructions? This is the question. Proverbs 4 and 1. Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father, and then attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. See, the lightning bulb should be popping on right now for some that hadn't heard me bring this out before. Now, the ones that follow me every week, you already know this is the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, which is the spirit of God, which is the spirit of Christ. This is who this is. And it's this same wisdom. In verse 9, it says, She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver thee. So that same crown of righteousness that we received even in Revelation, this is the same uh, wisdom. This is the spirit of God. This is what he promised us in John 14. He say, uh, when I, if I go, I will not leave you comfortless. I will send you the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, and he shall teach you all things. This spirit is styled in a woman's tense because it's a spirit. This is our wife that the Most High gave us. This is our wife, this spirit that he breathed in our, uh, in our nostrils, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. This same spirit, wisdom, so in verse 8, he said, exalt her, and she shall promote thee. 
she shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. So this is our wife he gave us. Spiritually speaking, for the ones that just starting to hear me for the first time so you won't think I'm crazy. Speaking on the spiritual level. Ecclesiasticus 24 and 32. I will yet make doctrine to shine as the morning and will send forth her light afar off. I will yet pour out doctrine as prophecy and leave it to all ages forever. Behold, that I have not labored for myself only, but for all them that seek wisdom. See, family, it ain't around it. If you want to go back to the kingdom of God and you want to enter in his kingdom, if you want to go through one of those 12 gates and worship him, you're going to have to have wisdom. If you want to know things about the Most High and His Son Christ, that Spirit, you're going to have to know wisdom. If you want to know the difference between Jesus the man or Yahweh shall the man and then Jesus the Spirit or Yahweh shall the Spirit, you're going to have to know wisdom because there is a difference. So this same wisdom would allow you to break all of this down using his precepts. And you can get a clear understanding what the Bible is saying from Genesis to Revelation. But you have to have wisdom, not world's wisdom but god's wisdom his precept he said behold that i have not labored for myself only but for all them that seek wisdom ecclesiastes 24 and 18 i am the mother of fair love and fear and knowledge and holy hope i therefore being eternal am given to all my children which are named of him. Come unto me, all ye that be desirous of me, and fill yourselves with my fruits. Now, I already read you the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. He said, for my memorial is sweeter than honey, and my inheritance than the honeycomb. They that eat me, meaning they that learn of me, shall yet be hungry. And they that drink me, meaning they that learn of me, shall yet be thirsty. He that obey me shall never be confounded. And they that work by me shall not do amiss. All these things are the book of the covenant of the Most High God even the law which Moses commanded for an heritage unto the congregations of Jacob. Now, we already know he told us that this, uh, the knowledge of his commandments is the of life. So now in verse 24, he said, Faint not to be strong in the Lord, that he may confirm you. Cleave unto him, for the Lord Almighty is God alone, and besides him, there is no other savior. Proverbs 1 and 20. Wisdom crieth without. She uttered her voice in the streets. She cried in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city, she uttered her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn ye at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. So this same spirit that he gave us, he's sitting there telling us how long will we only have a carnal mindset? How long will we just 
only see things carnally and never search out the spiritual things or the scriptures. How long will we just continue to worship in God in the flesh and uh, the rudiments of the world and the uh, traditions of men and having a form of God, uh, godliness, but denying the power thereof? How long? We're going to just be busybodies doing carnal works for the church and, and doing this for the building fund and, and doing that and doing this and doing that. And you think the, the carnal physical works that you're doing is going to get you a seat in the kingdom. And it's not. How long, family? How long? You're going to continue to worship him on Sunday and do your own pleasures on the Sabbath day. How long is it going to be until you come to the fullness of the power of the stature of Christ? He said, turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. See, family, like Elder Johnson always said, if you come to one of these channels, you didn't come here by mistake. I know as other channels out there have thousands and thousands and thousands of subscribers. But you didn't just come here by mistake. The Most High have a word for you. He has a word for you, family. He's trying to pour out his spirit unto you. He said, I will make known my words unto you. Proverbs 5 and 1. My son, attend unto my wisdom. And bow down ear to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. See, he's trying to feed us with his knowledge. He's trying to show us the way that we must go. He's trying to teach us how to obey his voice so we can enter in his kingdom. So you got other folks out there teach you all kind of other things. But the Most High is trying to teach you how to keep his precepts, how to understand his doctrine and how to gain his knowledge. This is the only thing that he's trying to teach you. And being that I work for him and, and, and we work for him, this is the only thing that we must do. Jeremiah 3.15. He said, I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. This is what we must do. Proverbs 24 and 13. My son, eat thou honey, meaning learn thou my law, because it is good. And the honeycomb, which is sweet to thy taste, so shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul where thou hast found it. Then there shall be a reward, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. See, once you gain this knowledge, and once you endure to the end, he said, he who endure to the end, the same shall be saved. But because you have this knowledge, in that same verse, he said, you're going to be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he who endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So this is what Christ is telling us. Oh, if you start gaining the knowledge of God, you're going to make folks mad. Especially folks that's older than you and been following God longer than you. You're going to start making them angry. 
and they're going to say things sometimes that they don't even mean saying it. But because of the knowledge that you possess from God, they have a problem with you. They're going to start calling you Satan and devil because you know how to precept this Bible and you know what the Bible is saying and it ain't saying nothing what they saying to say. And they can't figure out how you was able to pull the precepts to get that understanding. Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 12. Wisdom is glorious and never faded away. Yea, she is easily seen of them that love her and found of such as seek her. She prevented them that desire her and making herself first known unto them. Whoso seeketh her early shall have no great travail, for he shall find her sitting at his doors. To think therefore upon her is perfection of wisdom. And whoso watcheth for her shall quickly be without care. For she goeth about seeking such as are worthy of her, showeth herself favorably unto them in the ways and meeteth them in every thought. So when the Most High said, you didn't choose me, I chose you. He's telling us and giving us an understanding on it. It's the precept for that right there in verse 16. For she goeth about seeking such as are worthy, meaning they have a pure heart. You might just not have the knowledge of God. Your heart is pure. Your heart is right. Your heart is prepared. She goeth about seeking such as are worthy of her, showed herself favorably unto them in the ways and meted them in every thought. So we see that wisdom is seeking us. But the kicker is the ones that are worthy to receive this wisdom. So if you stiff neck, if you hard headed, you got a, a, a neck of iron, sin use, and you rebellious and you don't want to listen and you want to fight, you want to buck because you think you know it all, you're not going to receive this wisdom. Because guess what? I don't even know it all. But I search out his precepts diligently. I seek him diligently. But if you have the mindset that you already know what you need to know and nobody can't tell you nothing and you're afraid because you don't want somebody to try to change you, how you expect to receive all of this knowledge, all of this wisdom and gain his understanding that he's trying to give you? So he's telling us how he have it set up. He said in verse 13, she presented, she prevented them that desire her and making herself first known unto them. So think about that, family. Somebody trying to show you something just because you hadn't heard it before, because it's new to you and you ain't never heard it, it don't make it wrong. Because you just might be rejecting your lifeline, the very thing that can get you into the kingdom. The doctrine of life, the commandments of life. Verse 17, for the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline. And the care of discipline is love. And love is the keeping of her laws. And the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. And incorruption maketh us near unto Yahweh. 
and therefore the desire of wisdom bring it to a kingdom. See, family, the same thing I was saying earlier. If we want to enter in his kingdom and worship him through one of those gates, we have to have wisdom. If somebody trying to come to you preaching another doctrine, if you have wisdom, it's no way they can shake you. It's no way they can uh, have you to believe something that they cannot prove using the most high precepts because you will be able to affect, effectively precept his word and defend your faith and defend his doctrine. So he's telling us, verse 18, and love is the keeping of her laws and the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. So we know that he said he'll protect us, he will fight for us, he will do all of these things if we only obey his voice. See, this is wisdom. Proverbs, Proverbs 4 and 10. Hear, O my son, and receive my sins, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straight. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. See, family, you cannot get away from it. This is our life. In and out into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away for the sleep or uh, for they sleep not except they have done mischief and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall for they eat meaning for they learn the knowledge of wicked so in other words the world's knowledge and they drink men and they learn or either teach the law of violence. So we see even just past week where that cop had his neck on that brother or had his knee on that brother's neck. You can look in his face and you saw pure evil. He looked like he enjoyed doing what he was doing. Pure evil. You saw in Brunswick, Georgia, where those two guys, they hunted Brother Ahmaud Arbery down like he was a deer in the middle of the, in broad daylight. Pure evil. He said for they sleep not except they have done mischief. Sister Taylor sleeping in her bed. Cops bust up in the wrong house, started shooting, didn't even make themselves known. Pure evil. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. For they learn the knowledge of wickedness and they teach. The, the knowledge of violence, the law of violence. This is what this bread uh, and this wine is talking about. But he said, but the path of the just is as the shining light that shining more and more until the perfect day. See, when they was hanging our ancestors on them trees and castrating us, and raping our women, it was pure evil. 
He said, for the way of wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my sins. Uh, verse 21, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them. In health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Now, I'm going to back up for a minute to verse 22. <clears throat> because even as I was reading it, I'm going to just speak on something. Because the Most High, true enough, he already gave us and told us our characteristics. We some stiff neck, stubborn, hard-headed group of people. And so many of our family members have died because of health issues. Uh, even we see in this uh, pandemic that's going on with the virus, so many of us have fallen to it. But we we just so hard-headed, we don't want to put down unclean foods. We, we, we can look in the Bible in Leviticus 11 and he tell us what we can eat and what we cannot eat. And I don't care if you get tired of me talking about this. I'm telling you because I love you. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love your family, you will be in their butt every day telling them to put that pork down. Put the shellfish down. This is killing us, family. He telling us in verse 22, for they are life unto those that find them. And health, bingo, and health to all their flesh. Talking about wisdom. See, if you possess the wisdom of the most high, I wouldn't have to keep repeating this week in and week out to stop eating pork, to stop eating shellfish, shrimp, crabs, lobsters, scallops, uh, catfish, all of these different things. You know what they are. I don't even have to name them for you. Stop it. You killing yourself. Because this word is written on you. See, the other ones, they can eat it and it don't bother them. Guess what? The word is not written on them. Those curses in Deuteronomy chapter 28 is not written on them. It's written on you. See, he told you, you only have I known out of all of the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. See, the key word is you and your. Not them. This word is written on our life. You can run, but you can't hide. You can travel the globe and go wherever you think you can go to most remote part in this earth and you cannot hide from the most high. So if you want to live a long life or a healthy life for that point of the matter, because we know we all must die. He said, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Now we know the flesh is already 
uh, cursed because we come from the ground and the ground was cursed. But if you want to have a healthy life where how many ever years he allow us to have, he say, in health to all their flesh. Stop eating unclean foods. I couldn't stress this enough. I don't care if they get mad at you. Continue to tell your family members. Keep this in, in front of them because this is for their own good. You're making the doctors rich and the hospitals rich because you foolish and you don't want to listen to your heavenly father. You only have I known out of all of the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all of your iniquities. We got so many that's gone too soon. On dialysis too soon. On blood pressure medication too soon. Have sugar diabetes too soon. Have cancer too soon. All of these different diseases too soon. What are we putting in our bodies? What are we putting in our, oh, it tastes so good. Oh, this is soul food. Oh, my grandmama and my great, my grandmama, all these chitlins and, and this and that, and you don't even realize that all of this way of eating and stuff came out of a time where all they had was what was given to them on the slave plantations. And they may do with what they was given to survive. But as we started learning how to read and learning how to understand this book, that knowledge should have told us, you know what? I don't supposed to be having this. And we should have started putting it back down instead of making it a gourmet meal and something to pass down generation after generation after generation and it's stuck in our head and we can't get it out because we too busy trying to please our flesh instead of please the most high. He said for day are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Now, I'm not going to tell my age, but I will say this. I have never taken any medications, never been on prescription drugs, never had anything that was out of range and every time I go to do a, a yearly checkup and have blood work done, they always looking at me like I'm some strange object because they cannot believe that someone my age is not taking anything. They have 20 years old that's on prescription drugs and all kind of medication. And I don't have to take anything, blood pressure, everything, everything is in range. Now, mind you, I didn't always have this knowledge. And the level of knowledge that I'm on now, I didn't always have this, just started coming into this in the last three years, three and a half years. I first woke up in 2013, but 2017 is when my transformation started really taking place. All of my turning and started doing the works meant for repentance. The more and more knowledge I started gaining, 
then I started having to make the adjustments. But I just wanted to park right here for a minute because as we see, the scriptures are actually confirming and validating for they are life unto those that find them in health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. I just wanted to stress that, family, because we have so many health conditions, and a lot of these things can be avoided if we just open up the book and obey his voice. Now, let's keep going. First John 5 and 2. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love Yahweh and keep his commandments. For this is the love of Yahweh, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. 1 John 2 and 3. And hereby we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. And uh, He that said, I know him, and keeping not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Proverbs 4 and 24. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left, Remove thy foot from evil, Titus 2 and 1. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged woman likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness not false accusers, not giving too much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the words of uh, God be not blasphemed, young men, Likewise, exhort to be sober-minded. Talk about just having this wisdom and not being all bogged down with foolishness and false doctrines. Verse 7, and all things showing thyself a pattern of good works. And doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned. See, if you write in precepts. I don't care how angry somebody get, you cannot be condemned for running precepts. So the ones that like to follow my teachings and put a dislike, they can dislike my teachings all they want. I cannot be condemned for running precepts. That he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed. You ought to be ashamed of yourself disliking these teachings having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not purloining, but showing all good uh, fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, and all things. So we know that Christ is our teacher. He is our master. He is the good shepherd. And he said to please them in, well, uh, in all things, not answering again, not purloring, but showing all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior in all things. So we're going to adorn the doctrine of God through Christ. So Christ is the one that we obey. 
verse 11, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. You have some people say, oh, I'm going to wait till I get there. How are you going to wait till you get there and you are in the wilderness now to be tested by Satan just like Yahawashah was? You here to be tested and proved and tried to see if you worthy of entering in your kingdom. How are you going to sit there and say, oh, there's some things we don't know. We'll find it out when we get there. We'll do it when we get there. The devil is a liar. Verse 13. He said, looking for that blessed hope and that in the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, meaning salvation, the anointed, which is Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify himself a peculiar people, purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. So we clearly know the word Jesus means salvation because this is what he came to bring to his people, salvation. And we know Christ is the spirit of God. It's the, he's the anointed one. He's the one that descended and ascended Christ. Hebrews 6 and 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward Yahweh of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of uh, resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permit. So as long as he permit, week in and week out, we're going to keep pushing this truth. But we hope that you get it and don't have to Keep disobeying, then you start walking with them. Then you disobedient again, and then you start walking with them again. And, and then you just, because when you do these things, we're going to let them say what you do. Verse 4, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, meaning there's a spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. <clears throat> so we continue, excuse me, to crucify him every time we do this, family. We saying that we don't trust his word. We don't trust him that he's able to keep us from Satan or keep us from sinning. We don't trust him. So we have to continue to fall back and do other things. This is one when we do these things. crucify themselves, the Son of God, afresh, and put him to an open shame. So this is why these teachers are coming to keep us on the straight and narrow, family, and me, myself included. These teachers are not just for you. They're for me as well. They're for us as well. Because all of the time that we put in the studying, 
and help us on our journey. Most of the time we have way more precepts that we pull while studying than we even put in the teaching. But it's all helping us together to do his will and obey his voice. We don't want to continue to put Christ to open shame. Mm -mm. Hebrews 10 and 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of truth, of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. See, we not tasted this good word. We not got richly fed with a good meal, a spiritual meal. And we, some of us may have learned some things that we never knew because in them churches, they wasn't teaching you these things. First of all, you got to have the 1611 King James Bible with all 81 books in, in order to even receive the full entire knowledge of God. So he said, after we receive this knowledge, he said, for if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. <clears throat> 1 Samuel 2 and uh, 2. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none besides thee, neither there any, or neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so as seating proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. See, he already told us earlier in Ecclesiasticus that he weighed things out in the balances through his knowledge. And it just, it really saddens me when you're trying to reach the older ones, that 50 to 90 year old group. You know, I, I, I just have I just have a, such a love for that age group of people. Just have a love for them. Because I know they've seen a lot and they experience a lot. And a lot of them, they truly do love God with all their heart, all their soul, all their strength. I have family members that truly do love God. But when you try to show and share the knowledge of God, they shun you because they don't understand this level of knowledge. And I try my best to be patient and, and just tall and till the ground a little bit in my teachings because I don't want to come off as being arrogant or, or just trying to just come down on you without it being another avenue for you to get it. I don't mind spending that extra time for you to get it, but a lot of them, they just refuse this knowledge. And it saddens me to my heart because they are looking at the vessel that's bringing the knowledge and because this is a younger vessel than them and they may feel that how it is God going to show you these things and I've been doing this for so long and he had not showed it to me and when you have a carnal mindset like that you trying to understand things carnally, you're not going to receive the knowledge of God because he not left us some examples in scripture where he can use whomever he wants to use. 
your heart just have to be pure and cause worthy. You have to be worthy to receive this knowledge. We already saw what wisdom say she goes seeking such that are worthy to receive this knowledge. So when they reject you, when you trying to share it, they're not rejecting me. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting God. The same one that they love. The same one that they adore. And the sad part about it is because I search out precepts so much, I can't help but to think about Revelation chapter 17. When it speaks about that mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots, and how she was drunken with the blood of the saints, meaning she was drunken with the life of the saints. And John said, when I saw this, I wondered with great admiration. These people love God so much. They just about open up doors every day as a service. Church all throughout the week, week in, week out program. They love them so much. And I truly do know these people love God. I know this. But they reject the knowledge of God. They think it's something new because they have not seen these things before. They think it's something new and they don't want to trust it. And he's sitting there telling us, for the Lord is a God of knowledge. And by him, actions are weighed. So family, if you got a loved one you've been trying to work with, and don't give up on them. Continue to try to share that knowledge. If it's meant for them to get it, they'll get it. But if it's not meant for them to get it, they just ain't going to get it. It's got to be God that show it to them. We can't, only thing we can do is share, but we already know the spirit of God is the one that's seeking such that are worthy. We clearly saw it in the scriptures. But it just saddens me when you have someone that can show it to you and put it right in front of your face, put a nice gourmet spiritual meal right in front of you. And all you doing is giving them precepts. So we already saw the one said that you cannot condemn, your words cannot be condemned when you run in precepts. But they wanna tell you, Oh, I see what you're saying, but I don't agree with you. It ain't that you don't agree with me. you saying you don't agree with God because I'm not doing nothing but giving you his precepts. Let me move on along because, like I said, that 50 to 90-year-old crowd, <clears throat> I know they've been through a lot, but it's my prayer that we might can't reach them all. But it's my prayer that he can sift through that large group <clears throat> and be able to reach 
some of them before it's too late. First Corinthians 10 and one. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat, meaning did all learn that same spiritual meat, the same spiritual meat we eating right now. And did all drink, meaning did all learn that same spiritual drink. For they drink of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. And see, family, this ties right back to what I'm talking about. See, we eating that spiritual meat and we are drinking that spiritual drink right now. The precepts of the most high God of Israel. He said, and that rock was Christ. That same wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. This is that spiritual meat and that spiritual drink. But guess what? We're in the wilderness right now. See how this word is written on us? So the Most High allowed us to be born from our mother's womb. And as we grow old and we learn this knowledge, we are in the wilderness to be tested, to be proved, to see if we are worthy to enter in his kingdom. So getting back to my older crowd, the 50 to 90 year old, and I'm not trying to call nobody old, I'm just, just being respectful for this age group of people. He's sitting there telling us, but with many of them, God was not pleased, was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. So my question, If you was to ask the question to your own self in your secret closet, and the question would be, is Yahweh pleased with me? Is God pleased with my actions, my belief in him, the way that I worship him? Is God pleased with what I put in my body? What foods that I eat? Is he pleased with how I study the word? How I pray out to him? Is he pleased with these things? Ask the question to yourself. He said, but with many of them, God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Ecclesiastes 21 and 18, as is a house that is destroyed, so is wisdom to a fool. And the knowledge of the unwise is as talk without sense. Doctrine unto fools is as feathers on the feet and like manticles on the right hand. In other words, you being in captivity a fool lifted up his voice with laughter but a wise man do scarce smile a little learning is unto a wise man as an ornament of gold and like a bracelet bracelet upon his right arm a foolish man's foot is soon in his neighbor's house but a man of experience is a shame of him a fool will peep in at the door into the house, but he that is well nurtured will stand without. It is the rudeness of a man to hearken at the door, but a wise man will be grieved with the disgrace. The lips of talkers will be telling such things as pertain not unto them. In other words, being a busybody in another man's affairs. 
but the words of such as have understanding are weighed in the balance. The heart of fools is in their mouth, but the mouth of the wise is in their heart. See, that's deep right there. When the ungodly cursed Satan, he cursed his own soul. So in other words, you got Satan in your temple. You got that strange woman in your temple. You call yourself cursing Satan and you cursing your own soul. You was shaken by that mighty wind. The same mystery Babylon and great mother of harlots in Revelation chapter 17 that was drunken with the blood of the saints. <laughs> See, a lot of folks that faithfully go to church, they only can look at somebody who would, they would perceive to be a sinner, somebody that's just in the world that don't ever go to church, that's living any kind of way. They would look down upon that person and say, they're a sinner. They don't have the Holy Ghost. But because they go to church day in and day out, and they are faithful in what they believe, they actually think they're good. But what they don't realize, that strange woman, that mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots, they had, she had you too. Because if she didn't have you, the Bible wouldn't say so. She was drunken with the life of the saints and the martyrs of Jesus. So I curse Satan. I put him under my feet. The devil don't have no power here. You done heard all of these things in church. The devil don't have no power here. Get thee behind me, Satan. I curse you in the name of Jesus. He say when the ungodly curses Satan, he cursed his own soul. Ecclesiastes 25 and 8. <clears throat> well is him that dwelleth with a wife of understanding. See, I got to stop right there. Because if you got a carnal mindset, you not going to get this. He said, well is him that dwelleth with a spirit of understanding. Because we know the spirit that God gave us in the book of Genesis was our wife. That wife that he gave us bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh that he gave to Adam the spirit of God. Now I don't have time to break that down in this teaching, but the ones that follow me or follow Elder Johnson or Elder T, you clearly know that this already been broken down before. So when you have that level of understanding, that level of knowledge, not having a carnal mind, but a spiritual mind to know that wife is meaning that virtuous woman, which is the spirit of God, the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, understanding. When you read this verse, you won't never fall off. So I'm gonna read it spiritually. It say, well, is him that have, that dwelleth with a spirit of understanding and that have not slipped with his tongue, and that have not served a man more unworthy than himself. Well, it's him that have found prudence, and he that speaketh in the ears of them that will hear. Oh, how great is he that findeth wisdom, yet is there none above him that feared the Lord. See. He ain't talking about a carnal wife, a woman. He's talking about a spirit, a spirit of understanding. 
See, this whole entire Bible is spiritual. And if you don't pull precepts to, to find out the spiritual things, you won't ever understand the book. That's how come you have all of these different doctrines out here. And that's how come that mystery Babylon, the mother of Hollis, was drunken with the bloods of the saints and the martyrs for Jesus. Because they only had a carnal mindset. Verse 11, but the love of the Lord passeth all things illumination. He that holdeth it, whereto shall be, shall he be like him? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of his love. And faith is the beginning of cleaving unto him. Proverbs 2 and 1. My son, if thou will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thy ears unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lifted up thy voice for understanding, if thou seeket her as silver and searcheth for her as treasures, then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth come in knowledge and understanding. He laid up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Then shall thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yea, every good path. So family, I truly hope and pray that someone got something from this teaching. The most high sitting there telling us, I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my Lord. He clearly showed us that this doctrine that he give us is the doctrine of life, the commandments of life. And that spirit of wisdom told us that she's seeking such that are worthy. She's seeking us. She's seeking us out. She want to give us this understanding, this knowledge but we have to be worthy to receive it. So family, I'm gonna say a shalom to everyone. I hope you have a wonderful Sabbath. And just let's keep each other in prayer as we go on through these trying times in the land of our captivity. We got hate and evil and wickedness and darkness all around us. And we seeing it every day being played out. But we do know if we stay under the shadow of the wings of the Most High in that secret place, he will protect us. We be in his pavilion. We don't have nothing to worry about. So I'm going to say a shalom to everyone until we meet again. Shalom.